Hello and welcome to my first Unity tutorial. In this two-part video, we will develop the day-night cycle of this scene. Firstly, we will create a sun that passes through the sky on a tilted orbit, adjusting the intensity and fog according to time of day. Secondly, we will create a night sky that allows for Milky Way type clustered bands as well as size and color variations twinkling and fading per individual star based on distance from the horizon or dawn and dusk. We start off with an empty scene containing just a camera and a directional light. I'm going to add some existing scripts to the camera. The first one allows us to let the camera always follow a certain object and always look towards another. We'll maybe use that a bit later. The second one is a fly cam script that allows us to move the camera around and look in different directions. For now, I've fixed the movement to only allow looking straight up and down. And I'll set the limits here from 0 to the front to 180 for the back. You'll see in a moment what I mean. The script allows you to specify camera movements at specific times to simulate the fly through, but we won't use that here. So I'll just switch it off. And that should be it for the camera. For the directional light, let's reduce the shadow strength and set the render mode to important. The rest look fine for now. I'm adding a simple default terrain of 1000x1000 1000 1000 units and I'm centering it at zero. Let's also center the camera, although we want it slightly above the terrain on the, on the Y axis. The position of a directional light doesn't play a role, so you can place it wherever you like. I have it centered as well, or you can also place it somewhere out of the way. The rotation is what drives directional lights and I'm setting it to shine from directly above the x equals 90. So we should be able to see our camera and light in our scene view at zero. Let's increase the gizmo slightly and there they are. Now to orientate ourselves while the scene is running, let's add some objects as pointers or beacons. Let's place them inside an empty game object which we also position at zero. I'm placing two cylinders front left and front right and two spheres top left and top right. Any material will do for the spheres but I do want them to emit some light so that they will be visible at night when the scene is dark. If we run the scene now we'll see our front beacons and looking up with the camera we'll see the top beacons with the sun directly in between since we've set the direction of the sun as straight down. We can also keep looking up and backwards until we see the horizon behind us upside down. I'm going to keep it like this for now since it makes following the rotation of the sun and the stars seamless. Let's just move the camera a bit further up from the ground. Okay, let's start coding. Maybe just quickly rename our light to sun. I'm creating another empty game object to add the scripts to, just to keep it together. Let's call it controllers. We're going to create a new C-sharp script, call it day night controller and attach it to the game object. We start off with a type transform for the sun which we'll use to adjust the directional light and a type light for the sun which we'll adjust to obtain different effects like dawn, midday and dusk light. Next we need an input for time of day when the scene starts. One way to do this is to work just in seconds, for example seconds passed since midnight. This aligns to the way Unity measures time but it's not very intuitive to the user. So we rather build in an hour minute second interface. You could write your own class here, but it's quite simple to just use a vector 3 with x for hours, y for minutes and z for seconds. We set the default scene time at 6am, sunrise. We also need a parameter for the speed and set the default to let's say 100 real world seconds in one game second. I'm making this one public because some of the other systems in the environment needs to have access to the speed at which time goes by. To make the day-night cycle a bit more adjustable, we also cater for sunset time as a parameter, which we set to 6pm. Next, we cater for different fog colors. We want to gradually move between the two rather than jump from the one to the other. We choose grey for daytime and black for nighttime as defaults. Of course, you can play around with these to create all sorts of tinted horizons. Related to this, we can cater for different light intensities as a parameter, rather than forcing a fixed intensity. Again, we have a maximum intensity for day or noon, and a minimum intensity for sunset or sunrise. 
We set the maximum intensity to 1 and the minimum to a half. Again you can play around with these to see what looks best in each situation. So in order to set the system in motion, we need to keep track of the time of day in the scene. We add a float called time. Actually I see I've made all of these public now so let's just quickly fix that. Only time and speed needs to be public. Also time should not be an input so since we want it public we make it non-serialized. In order to do this we need to add the using system at the top. And now we can add a non-serialized public float called time. We need a few more variables. The current intensity and rotation of the sun and the previous rotation. We set that equal to minus 1 to start, just so we can know when it's the first frame of the scene. Instead of hard coding the rotation direction, we'll store it in a vector 3 so we can easily adjust it later on. We will also store our sunset and sunrise times since we need them each frame to set the light intensity. Since we're not forcing 12 hour light and 12 hour dark periods, we'll also need the ratio of actual daylight to 12 hours for the calculations. The final building block we require is a function that converts hour minute second time into seconds only. There are 3600 seconds in an hour and 60 in a minute, so we add all of these up to get the time in seconds. We may need to make this function public when adding more systems to the scene, but let's keep it private for now. Ok, let's start the first frame. We need to convert the hour minute second input into seconds by passing the xyz values to the function we've just created. We do the same for sunset time. We calculate sunrise as a mirror of sunset. There are 86,400 seconds in a day, so subtracting the sunset from this number lets sunrise happen as many seconds after midnight as sunset happens before midnight. This is not exactly aligned to the real world, but it's close enough for just about all practical purposes. For the sun ratio, we subtract sunrise from sunset and divide by half a day or 43,200 seconds. Next, we set the direction of rotation or rather the axis around which rotation should take place. We are going to start off with the simplest rotation around the x-axis, where the sun goes by directly overhead for the complete rotation, as if you were standing on the equator in the middle of one of its summers. If you are wondering why the equator has two summers, have a look at my video about the sun and earth and why we have seasons, I'll put a link in the description. So let's get the sun rotating at last. In the update step, we need to add time.delta time to the current time, but we multiply by speed to let time pass at the desired speed. Each time that we pass 86,400 seconds, it means one day has passed, so we increase our day count and let the time start at or just after midnight again by subtracting 86,400 seconds. I haven't defined a variable for days yet, so let's add an integer. I make it public in case some future script needs to know how many days have passed. To figure out the rotation, we look at what happens at 0 and 180 degrees. At 0, the light comes from directly behind and at 180, from in front. Dividing the 360 degree circle into 4 parts, we want the rotation to be at 0 degrees at 6 am, 90 degrees at noon, 180 degrees at 6 pm and 270 degrees at midnight. Each quarter is 21,600 seconds, so to translate 6 am into 0 degrees, we need to subtract 21,600. Next, we scale to 1 by dividing by the number of seconds in a full day, and we multiply by 360 to turn that into a full rotation. Of course, you could calculate 360 divided by 86,400 and use that one number here to save a tiny amount of processing, but I keep it like this for the sake of clarity. Let's connect the sun to the transform and light and let the scene run. What we find is that the sun rotates way too fast. The reason for this is that we haven't calculated the change in rotation, but the rotation from start. So each time the rotation is incremented, adding to the total cumulative rotation. And each frame the sun is rotated by this increasing number. There are two ways we could remedy this. The first would be to use time or delta time time speed in the calculation instead of time, but then you would need a once-off step to make sure that you start your rotation aligned with your starting time. We could also save the previous rotation and subtract that from the new rotation to only apply the incremental rotation. 
If it's the first frame, no rotation has yet been applied, so we set the sun transform's rotation to zero and set previous rotation equal to zero. Else we set previous rotation equal to the last rotation applied. Applying the incremental rotation at each frame will now ensure a correct rotation speed, as we can see when we run the scene. Let's start at noon. Also the movement is a bit slow, so let's increase the speed, say to 1000, and now we see the sun passing through the sky a thousand times faster than in real life. We still need to adjust intensity over time. We use a four part formula, one for each part of the day. From midnight to sunrise, the intensity ramps up from zero to the sunset sunrise intensity. Between sunrise and noon, it ramps up further to noon intensity. From noon to sunset, it ramps down to sunset intensity and then it ramps down to zero intensity at midnight again. We use this intensity for two things. Firstly, we interpolate between the night and day fog colors by using the lerp function of the color class. You could interpolate linearly, but fog usually works better when interpolating quadratically, so we use intensity squared. Secondly, we set the intensity of the light if it has been assigned. Let's run the scene again. We make it a bit faster. To turn on fog, we go to Window, Rendering, Lighting Settings and switch it on. We can make the fog a lot less aggressive. Let's also change the nighttime fog to just illustrate the functionality. Fog color and intensity is adjusted as the sun moves closer to the horizon. Look what happens if we make the sunset earlier, say 4pm. The scene darkens faster and by the time the sun is at the horizon, it's a lot darker than before. Now we want to allow the sun to not always pass by directly overhead, but at a slight tilt either side of perpendicular. To make this happen, we need to turn to our very useful friend, the unit circle and its trigonometric functions. The way we've currently have it set up is rotation around the x-axis, which corresponds to the angle alpha equaling zero. So the sun goes around up and down the y-axis, but into and out of the screen on the z-axis. I need to stress that this view is from the perspective of someone standing somewhere on a theoretically still standing earth. The sun isn't really orbiting the earth like this, this is just how it looks like to a person on earth that does not sense the rotation and orbit of the earth. Again, I'll post some links in the description to some of my videos about the sun, earth and moon's orbit and rotation if you'd like to see the entire system in action. If we want the sun to be tilted to the left hand side, we need to increase the angle alpha, which rotates the axis around which the orbit occurs. This causes the sun to appear tilted in the sky from the point of view of our observer. We can see that our x equals 1 axis now needs to change to an x equals cosine of alpha and y equals sine of alpha axis. And with everything we've already set up, it is literally as easy as that to cater for this tilt to the sun. Let's apply it in Unity. We need a float input for the angle at noon or the alpha in our unit circle. Now all we need to do is change the axis around which the orbit takes place. For x we use the cosine of the angle. Note that the angle is required in radians, so we convert degrees to radians using the built-in constant. For y we use cosine of the angle in the same way. And that's it. Let's set the angle at noon to 30 degrees and run it. As expected, the sun is now tilted 30 degrees to the left of perpendicular. Let's wait for a sunrise and follow it all the way around. This brings us to the end of part 1. In part 2, we will add the night sky, allowing the procedural manipulation of each star separately. I hope you'll tune in for the next episode.